taking the downtown trains. Once upon a time, there were trains and even streetcars running along the streets in downtown Belleville. My memories of the trains take me back to the early 1960s when dodging train traffic and tripping over steel rails on Pinnacle Street were everyday occurrences. I remember as a young mom bringing my kids downtown on the city bus to the Quinney Hotel during the Railway Week festivities in June of 1964. We were excited to view the last train blowing its whistle as it made its way slowly chugging down Pinnacle Street to the Four Corners. The arena was packed with concert goers to see Gordon Lightfoot and Railway Week was a memorable event for our city. The Bay City Street Railway operated from May 1876 to November 1891. The railway on Pinnacle Street was part of the Grand Junction, which ran from Belleville to Peterborough. Picture the wood-burning locomotives that carried passengers, lumber, and produce from the Grand Trunk Station southwest along Great St. James Street and down Pinnacle Street to the Belleville Harbor. The first freight train belched and bellowed through town in June of 1877, and the former Pinnacle Street Methodist Church, near where the Canadian Legion now stands today, was refitted as a station for the passengers. On June 24, 1877, the first passenger train departed the downtown station, heading for Sterling. In honor of this great event, the Masonic Lodge hosted a fabulous picnic lunch for the guests on board. It would take another three years before the rail line finally extended to Peterborough. Passengers and market vendors had to detrain at Balva Station, take the Bay City Street Railway to downtown, and then pay a separate fare to continue to the harbor. Early in the 20th century, the railway moved the tracks to the center of Pinnacle Street, and this line became the main interchange with the Grand Trunk Railway. The trains could now carry coal to the South Front Street dealers and deliver freight from the government docks. There were rail sidings for offloading at the Belva Rolling Mills and Graham's Coal Storage. Ice could load from the Glenroy Ice Factory on the city tracks, and it was a busy line for a rapidly developing city. The last freight train ran on June 16, 1964, and a week later, the passenger train took its final trip. Eventually, the tracks were removed and the street repaved, signaling the end of the downtown trains. Around the same time the Pinnacle Street Railway saga was unfolding, in 1977, a horse-drawn streetcar company burst onto the scene. Mr. Roblin, the owner, and Jason Tice, the manager, watched as their new streetcars slowly rumbled through town and dramatically changed the lives of townspeople forever. It ran from the Doctor's Hotel along Station Street, which was formerly called Mill Street, and down Front Street to the government docks. Five cars and 16 horses were stabled in a large barn just east of the Doctor's Hotel. Employees operated the trolleys from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., and ticket prices were six for 25 cents. A coal-burning stove provided heat for the passengers during the winter months, and straw on the floor kept their feet toasty warm. On Front Street, market days were crazy busy, as packed trolleys carried shoppers from Prince Edward County across the bay on the SS Quinty Ferry Service. In 1891, a fire destroyed all the horse cars and equipment barns, putting a fiery end to the horse-drawn trolley days. In 1895, Legere and Sons created an electrical streetcar business on Front Street in Balville. Poles and wires carrying electricity were installed along the city's central corridor while workers laid steel tracks on the ground. The first streetcar consisted of two cars, each towing a separate open trolley, and it ran along Front Street from the Doctor's Hotel on Station Street to the government dock. The streetcar operated like the horse-drawn trolleys and would pick up passengers from the ferry boats that docked at the harbor. The business operated for 10 years but was not profitable and eventually closed. Thank you for joining me on our journey through time for a peek at the progress made in public transportation for our town before the turn of the century.